today I'll discuss various types of myopathies focusing on the pathological rather than the clinical point. We'll begin with discussing some basic information then we will move to discuss several important muscle diseases. That includes muscle atrophy, muscular dystrophy, inflammatory myopathies, mitochondrial myopathies, and toxic myopathies. Let's start with some basic definitions that will make this subject easier to understand. The first definition is motor neuron, which basically means the nerve cell that delivers the impulses from the brain or spinal cord to the muscle. The second definition is muscle fiber or muscle cell, which is the main component of the skeletal muscle. A neuromuscular junction is the synapse or the area where the motor neuron and the muscle fiber meet together. The neuromuscular unit, which compose of one motor neuron, many neuromuscular junctions, and many muscle fibers. Uh, the number of muscle fibers in one neuromuscular unit can vary between 10 fibers in places where we need fine movements, like the hand, and 2,000 fibers in places where we have large muscles, like the back. On the left is a histological image of, again, a motor neuron exon and uh, muscle fibers and the neuromuscular junction. Another important definition is myopathy. Myo means muscle, pathy means disease. So this term includes any disease of the muscle tissues, whether it was a neurogenic, congenital, toxic, inflammatory, or due to muscular dystrophy. Speaking of muscular dystrophy, it's a group of inherited Inherited means it runs through the family. Progressive, which means that it gets worse with time. Non-inflammatory muscle disorders. Again, it's a group of inherited, progressive, non-inflammatory muscle disorders. This group contains many diseases, but the most common and important two are Duchenne and Baker diseases, which will be discussed later on in this lecture. Now we will discuss some basic knowledge that is related to the subject of myopathies. The skeletal muscle consists of different fiber types broadly classified as slow twitch, aerobic type 1, and fast twitch, anaerobic type 2. If you don't know the difference between the two, I encourage you to go and watch this video on Khan Academy on YouTube. The type 1 and type 2 fibers are normally distributed in checkboard pattern. Type 1 fibers stay more lightly than type 2 fibers in AT base stain slide under the microscope. So type 1 will appear whiter than type 2 when we stain them with AT base stain, but type 1 will appear red and type 2 will appear white on gross appearance. Please don't, don't confuse the two appearances. And as you can see here, on the left is a normal skeletal muscle with a uniform tightly backed my fibers that has peripherally placed nuclei. In the top center of the same picture, we can see an intravascular septum containing a blood vessel. Our first pathology for today is muscle atrophy, which is the reduction in the diameter of the muscle fibers due to a loss of protein filaments. It's usually caused by disuse or denervation. Disuse, like in patients who have been bedridden for a long period of time, uh, denervation which is the uh, loss of motor neurons supplying the muscle fibers. It could be due to acute causes, such as trauma, or chronic causes, such as motor neuron disease. Motor neuron disease um, is a disease characterized by degeneration of motor neurons. Note that in atrophy, the muscle fibers or cells do not uh, necrotize or die, but they reduce significantly in size and lose their ability to function properly. Here's another diagram showing two motor units. One is supplied by motor neuron A and the other with motor neuron B. What if motor neuron B is supplying type 2 muscle fibers and it got injured due to a chronic illness such as uh, motor neuron disease? Let's assume that the muscle fibers circled in red are controlled by the injured motor neuron B. What's going to happen to them is that they they will send certain chemical signals to the adjacent motor neuron asking them for help. And by help here we mean uh, innervation or nerve supply. The nearby motor neuron will send some exon to re those muscle fibers 
and if the motor neuron reinnervating those type 2 muscle fibers was supplying type 1 fibers, those type 2 muscle fibers will change to type 1. And that's called fiber type grouping, which indicates a recurrent neurogenic atrophy. After this process, the distribution of muscle fibers would look like this. Okay, so what if the other type A motor neuron got injured as well? And there are no other motor neurons that can supply those muscle fibers circular The answer is, if the muscle, fiber, muscle fibers didn't get re by a motor neuron, they will go undergo a group atrophy, as shown in the picture on the right. I understand that this segment may seem to be a bit tricky, so I will explain it again in another way. What happens when a motor neuron gets injured is that the adjacent intact neurons engage the neuromuscular junction of the previously denervated fibers, and a new connection is established. Then, these fibers assume the type of the innervating neuron. So, if the neuron used to innervate type 2 fibers, they will turn to type 2 fibers. If the neurons used to innervate type 1 fibers, they will turn to type 1 fibers. Eventually, the whole group of fibers can fall under the influence of the same neuron and become the same fiber type. Okay, moving now to a totally different type of pathology called muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a term applied to a number of genetic disorders that produce progressive deterioration of skeletal muscles. These disorders are different in both morphological and clinical features. The most common forms are Duchenne muscular dystrophy and Baker muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a very devastating disease. It's caused by a function mutation in the gene encoding the dystrophin protein. Dystrophin is a muscle cell membrane protein responsible for stabilizing the muscle cells during the contraction and allowing them to contract and relax without being damaged. Dystrophin defect makes the muscle cell vulnerable to transient membrane tears during the contraction that would lead to a calcium influx and disturbance of the intracellular signaling, which eventually will result in muscle fiber degeneration that with time will outpace the capacity of repair. Duchenne and Baker follow X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. That means the mutation is located on the X chromosome. And that's why the disease almost exclusively affects males. Because females are born with two X chromosomes, one from their mother and one from their father. So if a girl has one X chromosome that has the gene mutation for Duchenne, the body will generally choose to activate the other normal X chromosome. If this happens, the girl will be called a carrier of Duchenne, meaning that she can pass Duchenne to her sons, and her daughters can also be carriers, but she herself will not have the disease. On the other hand, males have only one X chromosome, so if that chromosome has the gene mutation for Duchenne, they will definitely develop the disease. Children with Duchenne muscular dystrophy are usually asymptomatic until the age of 3 to 5. That's when they develop a weakness that presents at the beginning as clumsiness, inability to keep up with beers, and frequent falls. The weakness will progress gradually with age, that's why most patients will need a wheelchair by the age of 7 to 12. These patients usually have imbalance between agonist and antagonist muscles, which lead to a abnormal postures and the development of contractures and joint immobility. Another important physical feature is the enlargement of the calf muscles. The medical term for this sign is zoodoo hypertrophy because this enlargement caused by fat and other connective tissues other than muscular tissue. What I want you to do now is to pause this video and go to YouTube and search for a video named The Duchenne Timeline by the Duchenne Foundation. This great video will show you the uh, progression of the disease. Okay, let's take a look now at the histological features of this disease. As we can see here in picture A, there's a variation in size between the muscle fibers, and there's also a cluster of basophilic regenerating my fibers, and a slight my endomesial fibrosis seen as a big connective tissue between the muscle fibers.
In picture B, immunohistochemical staining was used to highlight the membrane-associated dystrophy with brown stain in the normal tissue. In patient with Dushi muscular dystrophy, it shows a complete absence of the stain due to the lack of dystrophy. Disease of progression is illustrated in picture C with extensive variation in myofibrosis, fatty replacement, and endomesial fibrosis. Duchenne and Baker muscular dystrophy are caused by different mutations in the same gene. Baker muscular dystrophy has a clinical picture similar to that of Duchenne, but it's generally milder and usually occurs later on life. Another form of muscular dystrophy is myotonic dystrophy, which is an autosomal dominant disease. Autosomal dominant disease means that if one of the parents is affected, he or she will pass the disease to 50% of their children. Myotonic dystrophy is characterized by myotonia, which is the sustained involuntary contraction of a group of muscles. Patients with this disorder will complain of proximal weakness, stiffness, and other non-muscular complaints. Moving to another type of myopathies, which is inflammatory myopathies. Inflammatory myopathies are a group of muscle disorders characterized by immune-mediated inflammation of the muscles. That means the body is attacking itself due to immunological dysregulation. Based on the clinical, morphological, and immunological features, we can divide them to three major disorders. Polymyositis, dermatomyositis, and inclusion body myositis. What happens in polymyositis is that the inflammatory cells invade healthy muscle cells, which then become rounded and variable in size. In dermatomyositis, the inflammatory cells are centered around the blood vessels at the borders of the muscle fiber bundles or fascicles. Due to inflammatory process, the fibers around the fascicles often shrink. Sometimes we can see the inflammatory cells forming a cuff around the blood vessels. Inclusion body myositis is characterized by muscle fibers that contain empty bubble-like space called vacuoles and clumps of cellular materials called inclusion bodies. Inflammatory cells can be seen between the fibers. Mitochondrial myopathies result from mutation in either the mitochondrial or nuclear genomes. Those caused by mitochondrial mutations shows maternal inheritance patterns because, as you know, we get our mitochondria from our mothers. So, if the mother is affected, she will pass the disease to her children. If the father is affected, he will not pass the disease to his children. Our final subject for today is toxic myopathies which is basically means a muscle disease caused by a substance. This substance could be from inside the body, like in thyrotoxic myopathies, which is the result of an abnormal increase in thyroid hormones, or from outside the body, like in drug myopathies, which mostly caused by a group of medications called statins. And by this we conclude our lecture for today. I hope that you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best.